That's good. Um, great to be here. Thanks, Rod, for taking most of my speech. Um, <laughs> nice to see Peter Hayes in the audience. Uh, Peter was my first boss, um, which makes Peter quite old. <laughs> <laughs> and Helen, who worked for me longer than most people did. Um, how long was it? <laughs> 20 years? or? I wasn't far off, so that's quite good. Um, I usually talk about things completely differently than uh, most people. Tonight will be no different. Um, so I'll look at it at a, a, a different level, um, and I'll share with you some thoughts um, from the, the, the suit end of town, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, before I start, I'd just like everyone to do what I think we don't do in New Zealand, and it's one of our biggest weaknesses. And we don't think about what's happening in the world enough and the impact that it has on the way people engage. So if you just um, close your eyes and kind of think about what's going on, the world really changed, I think, well, visibly changed with Brexit. Um, an amazing vote occurred. David Cameron, even... Um, our friend Boris didn't realise what the outcome was going to be and they were on opposing sides. Um, so there was a vote that changed the structure of um, European society and English society. Really, really important. Um, we've got them, and, and a, as just said, I've just been in um, Washington in a conference. Um, amazing time in America where we have two candidates. I don't think any American is actually proud of the fact that they are the two candidates. Regardless of where they sit, it is a shocking outcome for um, what most people or some people would describe as the greatest country in the world. Um, we've got um, Italy in the next two or three months will probably have a vote on whether it stays in the EU. Um, I think every newspaper you read in the world will tell you that China is on the brink of a financial movement, um, the impact of which could be dramatic for all of us. Um, and it goes on. So I think just want to, and sorry, most, probably most relevant to us is Malcolm Turnbull goes to the polls because he wants to tidy up his position and, and make sure he's comfortable and he ends up with less power and Pauline Hanson having an amazing number of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, politicians. I mean, having one for Pauline Hanson was too many. So uh, anyway, so I think you need to just, just remember that, and I'll try and uh, bring it together. Um, I'm not talking about electricity, and I'm not going to talk about Tesla. I'm more than happy to talk about that in question time. And Rod, thank you very much for uh, uh, talking about uh, what we're trying to do in, in Vector, because I think we are trying to be different. Um, sustainability, from where I sit, in its true meaning is to nourish and uphold life. Um, so I think sustainability is going to become synonymous with survival. And I don't mean about um, quite the same level of climate change, but about social fabric of society. And to me, survival of society itself is going to come to sustainability. Um, I've been really blessed this year. I have travelled a lot, been quite lucky. Um, normally I don't. Um, but the one thing I think you get when you travel is that Tamaki Makara is actually probably one of the best places in the world. We have been actually really, really lucky to end up in this place. The real issue is whether being that lucky we have done enough with it or whether we are going to do enough with it to ma maintain our right to have Auckland as a great city. So if you just simply look around everywhere in the world, everyone's doing something to allow them to survive. So Moscow's even building um, an inner city rail network because it's actually one of the worst places in the world to drive. Um, London's built a new underground. Um, Washington's building a railway line to the airport. Sydney's pulled out all its inner city and is starting again. So the list goes on. Um, unfortunately, have we done enough? And my gut feel is um, we actually um, haven't. Because when we look at society and we look at 
the people that have actually been affected most by all of those things that I think are, are happening in society. What we're seeing is middle class is actually being disenfranchised and is disappearing. The middle class of our world is actually really important how the people who live in St Helia survive and how the people who live in, in Otahu and South Auckland survive. We actually need um, people to be able to live in Auckland so that we can get the structure to work. So we need nurses to be able to live and work here. We need teachers to be able to live and work here. Um, we need policemen. We even need office workers at Vector to want to come and work there. What we're facing at the moment is that those people are looking at their alternatives for very simple reasons. The Southern Motorway is becoming exceedingly clogged. Now, they used to live in, um, near their family, they used to engage with their family, but they actually want to have a house, they want to have a garden, they want their children to understand what are the things that we were brought up to cherish. So they're moving further and further down that road. It takes roughly as long to come from the bottom of the Southern Motorway as it does to live in San Francisco. San Francisco is dealing with exactly the same issue. The issue is that they don't want to do that. So they're gonna go and move, and we're seeing this, um, to Tauranga, to Hawke's Bay, Nelson, wherever they can go, they can get good schooling, they can get a good job, they can get a really good lifestyle, and they probably have some money left behind. So, to me, the most fundamental issue that we face from a sustainable point of view is we have to fix the Southern Motorway. Um, I got a petition when I got home this morning that we should fix the waterfront. I'm not quite sure what that was about. Um, I think we need to focus on the big things. And to me, that is one of the most um, fundamental issues, is making Auckland a place where the middle class can afford to live and will live. Because without them, we are not going to be sustainable. Um, the second issue I'd like to discuss, because I think it, it's, and um, Helen and Helen will know more than anyone else, I'm not a farmer and I don't relate too well to um, the country. I'm an urban boy. Um, our waterways are critical to us, and they're critical to us on a number of aspects. And wearing a suit, I'll just talk about the suit aspects. The first thing is the tourism has become the biggest thing and sorry, I should say, I really am frustrated with Nick Smith because I do not understand the word wade. So he's going to make my rivers wadeable. And I just don't know what wadeable means. Um, so am I going to wear those things that some people do when they fish? So does that mean I'm going to wade? Or am I going to do small gumboots or big gumboots? To me, every river in this country has got to be one where I can walk through and I can swim. That's it, there is no other middle ground. That's for me on a personal level, but also much more on a business level. So from tourism point of view, New Zealand Green is a great logo. 100% pure is what every foreigner will come to New Zealand for. But over time, we've forgotten to tie the words and meaning together. And I think it's a really big issue for tourism. Then we come to the other big industry we have in this country, and it's called farming or agriculture. And um, I'm a believer in conscious capitalism. I think Whole Foods is one of the most amazing stores in the world. It's very expensive, and I agree with that, but it is an amazing store. And that is about, um, in very simplistic terms, like, you know, it's about, one, we should have organic, and two, um, we should have tradable, um, uh, products so we can understand the quality and um, everything has to be good. We can't get our products into Whole Food, Whole Foods. Whole Foods should have New Zealand products on every level. It doesn't because we don't know enough about making sure that our 100% green works. And to me, if we don't get that right, we're not going to be sustainable. The relevance of that is Auckland needs the rest of the country to survive and to prosper, and we need to be part of that. Um, so then we come to um, the final point that I need to make, and why is this relevant to suits? What's happening around the world and what's happening in um, with those issues that I first raised, and hopefully this comes together, 
is that the legitimacy of governments is weakening. That's really critical. If it's weakening, um, and surveys in America actually show, um, at the same time, unfortunately, the faith and respect that businesses had in the world is also falling. So there's a survey done in America recently where um, CEOs are actually rated less trustworthy than politicians. Not sure who did it, but let's just um, <laughs> run with this. But if we come back to the fundamentals of faith and integrity and what capitalism should be, we can understand why people are losing faith in it. Um, it is inconceivable that a CEO of a bank can earn over $20 million when a, um, a teller is earning um, just above the minimum wage. It doesn't make sense. And you know, if you're sitting outside that environment, you have got to be questioning it. Um, the Americans are looking at moving their minimum wage over time to $15. Um, it's an amazing thing for them to want to do. Um, they're buying into this concept far more than we are, but we do need to take on board that we have an obligation. So at the moment, there's a void. Um, as I said, we don't trust Hillary, we don't trust Trump, um, and the reasons for each one why we don't trust them, and it goes right around the world. We're kind of living in a vacuum because John Key, to his um, credit, the one thing he has done, I think, exceedingly well is build um, a balloon um, <laughs> that makes us feel really good about who we are and how we're going without taking account of what else is happening. But if we look outside, there is a complete collapse. There's a vacuum. When there is a vacuum, something fills it. If you leave the vacuum empty, then populism, popularism will take over. That can't be good for capitalism. So if you believe in capitalism and you want it to continue, which is everyone in a suit, you actually need to do something. And what we're seeing is, and it really blew me away, is that the directors and the businessmen in America are actually saying, we need to do something. Some of them are saying, we need to fill the void because simply it's the only way we'll retain what we're doing. Some of them are saying we actually need to fill the void because we're over 40, we've made a hell of a lot of money and we actually have an obligation to do something and they should be applauded. But we should also applaud those for business purpose. Am I running out of time? Oh. <laughs> Pretty much, okay. Um, we need to do that. The real question will be, can the businessmen of New Zealand and the directors of New Zealand actually appreciate that obligation and step up and do it, because they will need to change to do it. <laughs>